just spend all this time with this person and just enjoy them. And we're like, yo, it's like 10 hours later, I'm not even hungry. Like, I just want to be with you. This is the deep dive with Adam Roa. So the first one is lust, which is ruled by testosterone and, and estrogen for women. Okay. So that is more of our primal state where we're like craving that person. We want them. Um, the, and we want to jump their bones, like <laughs> just from the primal sense. Um, the second one is love and that's associated with dopamine, norepinephrine and, um, serotonin. Serotonin rules primarily our functioning around, um, being hungry, being thirsty, our drives. We think about our drives. Um, when we have low serotonin, um, we, we, especially during times where we might feel depressed, we are not as hungry. We're not, we don't have a very high mood. We have a lack of motivation, but if we think about in love, we have higher levels of that. And so this is where we can, we feel really satiated. We feel like we can go for a really long time and not eat with, <laughs> like we can just spend all this time with this person and just enjoy them. And we're like, yo, it's like 10 hours later, I'm not even hungry. Like, I just want to be with you, you know? Um, and dopamine is, is um, again, another feel good um, pleasure hormone. We do this when we're engaging in activities that are fun. So um, you're playing the guitar and it's fun. You're releasing a lot of dopamine there. Um, norepinephrine is a is one of the stress hormones that that we release that give us a lot of energy. Um, this is present in excitement, um, also in nervousness. <laughs> and then in the last phase, this is more of um, like with attachment. It's more around the hormones of uh, oxytocin because oxytocin is a bonding hormone. And in the That's last the one phase, I was confusing with serotonin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oxytocin is more around uh, connecting us for like building a family or ensuring that the bond stays. In, and um, so it would make sense that we would progress into that and that wouldn't be present in, during less state. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you, you become a stage 10 clinger. To everyone. And so, um, I, I love that understanding that the way that you broke that down so that people can really get a sense of chemically, right? Yeah. It's not just, I, I, so many people talk about just, this is how I feel. And, and there's, mm -hmm. there can be a lot of pain, honestly, and suffering in these, in these transitionary, when you're going from one stage to the next and your chemicals are actually shifting. Um, I think that there, without an understanding of it, it, even with an understanding of it, it there can, it can be painful there. I mean, it can be difficult that, that transition. Um, I would say that, you know, a great example, my last relationship didn't make it through the transition into kind of the next stage, because mm -hmm. after that initial stage of attraction, right. And then going and, and seeing it, okay, now we go into three months, four months, five months, when that shift happens and sh shit gets real, so to speak, right. She, that Then you start to notice the little things and pay attention to those little things. Yeah. And what would be your primary suggestion on for someone who's now maybe aware, okay, I feel like we're transitioning into a different stage now. What would be a suggestion mm -hmm. that you have for how to handle that in a relationship in a really conscious way to set yourself up for assuming you want to stay with that person, set yourself up for success in that way? Yeah, that's a great question. So knowing what these phases are and knowing that the chemicals do drop during that point, we, we start seeing parts of ourselves, uh, I would say more of our authenticity might come out more um, as we get to know them, or at least it's more visible to us. <laughs> I guess both, right? Because when we first get into a relationship, we want the person to see our best. So we're showing them how fun and lively and, and intelligent, and we love going hiking all the time. <laughs> and yet as time progresses, we start to get to know who they are as on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And we get to know their frustrations, their annoyances, you know, that start coming out because there isn't so much of the padding of the, the dopamine and the serotonin coursing through the body to, uh, you know, sort of like increase our tolerance for little, <laughs> little things that are poking us. So if we know that this is, that this is happening, that this is going to happen, 
can we be mindful of it? And instead of pull far away and be like, you're, you're a total lie, fake, <laughs> you know, this isn't who you presented yourself to be when I first met you, but instead moved f- towards that person with curiosity. Mm. You know, be curious about these parts that are showing themselves, you know, what's there. Cause this is intimacy. This is where intimacy starts to really deepen. We get to meet these different parts. We get to speak to these different parts. This is where a lot of healing can happen um, because we're meeting these parts and then we're accepting them. We're loving them. We're being curious about them um, just as they are, or we can encourage a deeper exploration or expansion. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you've made it this far, it means that you watch the whole thing. And that means that you're soul family because you are someone who is asking the deeper questions. You are wanting to expand yourself in your life. And I appreciate that because honestly, why else are we here but to grow and expand and learn? And if you're getting value from these videos, I want to remind you that it's actually a clip from a full podcast. So there's a link in the description so that you can listen to the entire thing. I encourage you to do so. I think you're going to like it. 